music. So I think it's going to work and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So let's get into it here with our next CAD versus CAD battle. And once again, we're in the semifinals. Congratulations to, to Atze earning that first point. And uh, good luck to Atze and Max on this next one. If Atze can win this next point, then that will be it. Game over and Atze will be moving on to the world championship match. Uh, if Max can win this next point, then we all win because we all get to see another match between these guys. So here we go. Shake it off a little bit, guys. And this next CAD vs. CAD battle in our world championship semifinals between Max, our number 11 seed from Denmark running Fusion, and Atze, our number 9 seed from Macedonia running SolidWorks, begins in 3, 2, 1... Go! What is the mass of this multi-body part or assembly in XXX.XGrams? The tolerance on this part is plus or minus 0.05 grams. So we're doing something a little new here. We're kind of tightening up that tolerance. For the material and the density, see the bill of materials. This is a multi-body part and good luck to our runners. Let's take a look at how they're, go how they're going with this thing. We got Max on the left running Fusion. We got Atze on the right running Solid Works. And it looks like Atze is about to draw first blood with that very first extrusion. Let's go. This thing is called a diesel screwdriver because the handle is made from aluminum and the shaft is made from stainless steel. <laughs> So good luck, good luck. Let's see how these guys do. Very interesting once again to see the approach here. It's always you got all in one shot versus individual pieces. Yeah, it looks like Max on the left is uh, starting with like like you said the handle and uh, kind of the whole the whole shape. Where Atze on the right decided to take take a, a look at maybe take a look at that shaft first. I mean that sharp that sharp geometry that he's creating there looks to me like the shaft, yeah. So he's he's trying yep. to get in there and create that shaft first. So very interesting. Uh, Gino in the chat has found this channel by chance. Amazing one, nice. Welcome, welcome, my friend. And I'd say diving in there and uh, creating the geometry there on the front of that handle. And guys, put a one in the chat if you can hear the hype music and if it's hyping you up. Let me know that this was worth the investment. So I see a couple of questions coming through on the side of Fusion with a little bit of things like lagginess and slow. And I would have to mention to you guys that uh, most commonly what I see in the world of Fusion being laggy and slow is due to computer performance. Okay. But if you guys want a more one-on-one -on -one approach to that, feel free to reach out to us through our channel and I can help diagnose your system. Again, with the great world of Windows and Chrome alone eating 16 gigs of RAM, there's a lot of things. It's the great thing about solid box at the end of the day is you know you can get that stripped down and lightened up right out the box yes shout out to solid box so i would be curious though is i guess this would be my question because i know solid works in a true environment of doing this not speed bottling wouldn't you approach this from parts into an assembly versus bodies right yeah that's a great question phil and the answer to that question is you could definitely do it either way um, you could do it as uh, as individual bodies, you know, and it's you know, SolidWorks just like like Fusion, like a lot of the CAD systems out there, uh, allows you to to model as multi-body and then turn it into an assembly, multi-body, and leave it as multiple bodies. Uh, you have a lot of flexibility there if you really learn some of the the more powerful elements of multi-body. And so you could definitely, yeah, you could definitely go either way. But like like you said, Phil, I personally, I probably would opt to model them as two separate parts and then bring them together in an assembly. Uh, the thing is, in this, in the case of this model and in the case of a lot of the models that we see here in the tournament when they are multi-body there are often interrelationships between the components you know the the depth of the, yeah. the, the depth of the shaft might be related to the uh the hole in the handle or there may be some other things that are going on i don't want to give away too much but there may be some other things going on with this drawing that that might actually make it advantageous to do it all as multi-body and that's how the real world is too you know a lot of times in the real world you've got multiple components that are all kind of related to one another and so it actually could be a little bit easier to work in multi-body so in the case of this tournament you could 
could design this as multi-body or you could design it as individual components, whatever you prefer as a, as a runner. Going back to what you were saying in that first part, talking about organization and all of that is it's one of those things in the world of fusion is I see a lot of people in chat saying bottom up, top down design. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a middle out workflow in fusion, but you're right is when you're dealing with two components in our cases or multiple parts is you do have to drive some dimensions off other dimensions with tolerancing. And that all comes into your timeline or your design tree in the order of operations. Well, we just saw Max go through and assign the materials to his components in Fusion. I think we might end up seeing an answer. Max comes in with an answer, 225 grams, and that is not correct. 225.5 would be his answer, and that is not correct. So Max is going to need to look at that drawing and try to figure out what he missed. He's now burned off one of his available two answers. So good luck to Max looking back over that design. But 225.5 grams, that is not correct with intolerance. And so Max is going to need to uh, take a look at that drawing and see if he can't figure out, is it was it the wrong material? Was it the wrong density? Was there some geometry somewhere he missed? A bad dimension? A missing fillet? You know, he's going to look at that drawing and he's going to try to figure it out. All of us in the audience are just going to hang out and watch. We could say something like, I, uh, I think... Uh, I think uh, I see what's missing. I think I see what's wrong, but uh, it's up to us in the audience. Jern saying, I think that might have been, uh, okay, he looks like Jern is auditing uh, Matab. Looks like things, we're, get, we're having some uh, some battles here in the family. We got Jern auditing Matab here, unless it was something that I said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and Atse coming into the chat with an answer. 226.98 or 227 grams. That is not correct with intolerance. So now both of our runners have answered one time incorrectly. It's not time for the Clock of Doom yet. The Clock of Doom only happens when somebody answers twice incorrectly. But now it is do or die. If you answer incorrectly again, you will not earn this point. And so Atse has a chance to close down the entire competition to move on to the championship. Max has a chance to kind of tie things up. And so both of our runners are now re-examining the model, re-examining the drawing and trying to see if they can't figure out what did I do wrong? What was I missing? And it's very interesting. This is an interesting drawing. And uh, if you guys have the screen capture or if you need to, you go back. And Max comes in with an answer. And his answer is 198.9 uh, grams. And that is not correct. And so guys, we bring out the clock of doom. Now Atze has been in this spot before and here he is again. If he can answer this correctly with the clock of doom on, then he will move on to the championship. He's got four minutes and 45 seconds. The clock of doom is upon us. Max has answered twice incorrectly. Atze has answered once incorrectly. And now it's going to be up to Atze to look over the entire model and see if he can't figure out what he was missing, what he did wrong, and see if he can't answer correctly. This is where there's a lot of pressure. It's really truly up to Atze to win or lose this battle. What's going to happen, Phil? Honestly, I think from the angle of what I can see on what you have overlaid right now, I have a feeling I know exactly where both people are struggling. Yes, I agree. Wow. So both of our runners were really anxious to get that answer in there. And uh, both of our runners now need to uh, look at their, their models. Of course, Max is only looking at it for the, a point of pride. But I'd say... Three minutes and 45 seconds. He's trying to look over all the dimensions. He's trying to look over the drawing. These are not easy drawings, okay? This one is another tier five. Had a couple of tier fives here today. Or actually, I guess we have a, we've had one of each. We have a, had a tier six, we had a tier four, and now we have a tier five. I'd say he's going through the model, trying to figure out. Tomas Spiel says, how can I participate? I'm from Argentina. So we, the participation is open to everyone, but you have to qualify for our tournaments. And our next tournament is going to be in January 2026. You can also join us on episodes of Model Monday Live. And you can visit us at twotalltoby.com slash tournaments to learn more. Great question. Richard in the chat says, it's so frustrating not to discuss the problem. 
Yes, I agree. I agree, I agree. We're all right there together. The car Jesus says, right there, this is intense. Yes. And I'd say two minutes and 45 seconds. Good luck, good luck. Yeah, this is, it's always, it's funny because people in chat are just wanting so hard to scream it out that yep. I think we need to set up and do a two tall Toby. <laughs> a challenge where I do things wrong and let the chat say what it was. Where I... Well, no, I think honestly, we need a live watch party in your area. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. I like the sound of this a lot. I always get it wrong. You're you're in Philly or you're in Yeah, Pittsburgh? that's right. Yeah, Philly. You're in Philly. All right. So, I might be up your way near December time frame. Okay. But... Let's make it happen, my friend. <laughs> One minute... I, I do bring a projector and everything with me if you want to do a watch party in Philly. One minute and 50 seconds. And we see Ase is now truly feeling the pressure. And I think that, you know, the, the uh, audience has been watching him. And I think that they're... Very interested in where he's going with this. One step away from a heart attack, says Elaine. Elena. Okay, this is intense. Bump up the music. We got a request here to bump up the music a little. Watching with my son for the first time. Big shout out to Jack. Big shout out to Jack. I'd say one minute and 14 seconds left. See what he does with this thing. Looking over all his dimensions. He's thinking about it. Of course, the YouTube chat will probably block him. The, the fusion, the fusion YouTube uh, uh, chat will probably block him. And somebody actually pointed out what you need to do on your website is host the uh, the shot clock with the verifying of the answer. So they yeah. just go to the website and punch it in. We do, we actually do that on Model Monday Live. All right, yep. we're, we're waiting for the answer here, I'd say. Don't, don't take too long if you know. I don't want you to end up not answering here. Okay, and I'd say comes in with an answer. 202.6. And Phil, we got ourselves a champion. Moving into the final two, the Heads Up Championship. That is correct. 202.6 is exactly the correct answer. Wow, wow, wow. In a little over 11 minutes, Atze was able to construct that thing. He realized that he had something wrong. Max looks like he also realized he had something wrong. And Max also uh, got in there with that combined mass. Looks like he was pretty close to that same combined mass. But wow, guys, be sure to put a GG in the chat. I'd say once again in that spot where he was facing kind of a sudden death situation, had to run up against the clock and figured it out the last moment. Gosh, I would love to talk to Atze and find out what he was thinking and what it was that made him finally realize the shaft of that screwdriver was square. Both of our runners, interesting, both of our runners looked at the print.